Good afternoon, folks. Well, you know how it all says when it goes one way and it should go the other? Well, that's how I look at this. Now, if you really want to get into these things, well, let's look at it this way. I mean, I stand corrected when it comes to the to the Congre Congressional vote. It happened one other time. It happened in 1876 as well. When Rutherford Hayes ran for president. He ended up getting elected. But the difference between that and the other incident with John Adams versus... John Quincy Adams, excuse me, versus Andrew Jackson... Was that? Let's get to that. The situation with jo with John Quincy Adams and Andrew Jackson in 1824 was that Andrew Jackson had 99 electoral votes compared to 84 for John Quincy Adams, and he also had and John Quincy Adams didn't have the didn't have the popular vote, just like it is today with Donald Trump. And, and Joe Biden. But the difference between now and then are the very similar situations. But however, the only difference is 13 states voted in favor of, of John Quincy Adams and only 7 in favor of Andrew Jackson. That's the only reason why Andrew Jackson lost. Now, you go back to years then John then Andrew Jackson ran one year later, ran the fall not one year later, excuse me, he ran after that and won. He ran against against his foe and won. Now, rewind years later, 24, <laughs> 52 years later, had to do some math there, rewind 52, fast forward 52 late, years later. 1876, right after the Civil War. General Grant was in office, getting ready to leave office after he served his two terms. 22nd Amendment wasn't in place yet. You had Rutherford Hayes, a Republican from Ohio, and Samuel Tilden of New York, a Democrat, running. Now, the difference between these two, a little different. Obviously, we'll do a little history with Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson had 153,544 votes to 108,740 108, votes, which would end in... For John Quincy Adams. Now, total electoral votes would be 99 votes for Andrew Jackson to 84 votes for John Quincy Adams. Then, obviously, a lot of questioning votes there, so it went to 13 states voting for, for, for him. Voting for Quincy Adams to only 7 for... Andrew Jackson, which is where the disappointment came into play for Andrew Jackson, which clearly won. Now, in this situation, supposedly fraud was found in... Now, this is where this case is similar to, to what we're dealing with today. Fraud was, situ was clearly a situation back in the day in 1876. Now, I'll read you what this says about in 1876. Let's read this together now. 
Heading into the 1876 election, a weak economy and rampant corruption within the Grant administration had cost the Republican Party popular support. A call for reform dominated the election campaigns of the parties. The three main presidential candidates were favorite Democrat Samuel Teldon, relatively unknown Republican Rutherford Hayes, and Peter Cooper of the Greenback Party. On election day, Tilden won a majority of the popular votes, but failed to get a majority of the electoral votes by one vote. The Electoral Commission voted for Hayes. Congress confirmed Hayes' election only after the Southern Democrats agreed to back Hayes if he promised to withdraw federal troops from the South. A point Southerner, a point of Southerner, to his cabinet, looking to demands for railroad subsides. Hayes thus became the first president after John Quincy Adams to win the election without winning the popular vote. So, with that being said, let's look at the numbers here. Now, this is what he won. Rutherford Hayes, this is the popular this is by popular vote. Four million thirty six thousand five hundred and seventy two votes. Now Samuel Tilden, the Democrat, won four million two hundred and eighty four thousand twenty votes. Now that's how many votes all together. Now if you go by electoral votes, it's one eighty five to one eighty four, one vote each, one vote by one vote in favoring Rutherford Hayes. Now, if you want to look at the state wise, these are the states that were won by by him, by Rutherford Hayes. Oregon, California, Nevada, Kansas, Colorado, Nebraska, Minnesota, Iowa, Louisiana, Florida, Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, South Car and South Carolina. Not sure how much all those are worth. Now, Tilden won Texas, Missouri, Arkansas, Indiana, New York. Um, looks like Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, Maryland, West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina, Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia. He won all those states. Now, I don't know how much all those electoral votes were, were cost back in the day. So who knows how much those would have been costly worth. Now, anything knows, obviously, California wasn't worth 55 electoral votes back in the day. Because if they were, they would have had a lot more. Besides, California wasn't like it was then as it is now. <coughs> now, when you continue to look at certain things... Then, obviously, other things continue to look at it. But the Democrats look at things differently. They continue to say that we are attacking their democracy by objecting the votes. Okay. What if it was on the other foot? They'd be attacking ours. If they were attacking our democracy, they'd be saying, oh, it was a fraudulent election. Okay, it's a two-way street here, Democrats. And Mr. Keith Ol Olbermann, who says, arrest all, arrest all Trump supporters and arrest Donald Trump and arrest all those who are supporting the objection of this election, throw them all in jail. 
Does he realize how many people that is? That's more than what you can even count. I mean, I don't know if you can even hold that many people in a jail cell. But that's fine. Because I'd sure like to see him come after me. So I'm here, Keith. Yeah, that's right. That's you, Keith. Because I'll be waiting for you. I got a little nice 45 cal and I ain't afraid to use it. But I'm back on our subject. The Democrats are trying to say that we should just bow over and just give up. Well, if a Democrat, because last last three Republicans who ran for office, well, not last three, but the last two times they ran, when George Bush was in office, both times when he ran and won, they objected. And then when, and then when Donald Trump ran, and when he won the last time, they objected. Okay, what do we got here? Yet yeah, they're allowed to object, but yet we can't. There's a problem here. And yet the news is in their pocket. And yet they're all okay with that. That's a problem I got here. The Democrats are okay if they object if it doesn't fit their narrative if it fits their narrative. But if it doesn't fit their narrative, then they got a problem with it. Now, if the fraud was going their way, if Donald Trump won the election, they'd be pushing this Russian narrative saying the Russians helped with fraud. Saying it was all fraud and it was all Russian all over again. They'd be pushing this false Russian narrative again. Just saying. And a fact with fact. Well, we all know the facts. And that there are some facts. Well, with that being said, I got some more work I got to do, and I'll see you soon.